Hi, this is Shannon Gilman, and I'm going to show you how to use progress learning for student engagement and student differentiation. Okay, so in order to get into progress learning, what was formerly known as USA Test Prep, you're going to go to the Horry County website, and you're going to go to the Student Learning Commons and log into Clever just like you would any other thing. Now, I already have progress learning like, so it pops up right at the top. But if you don't, on the district page, you're going to scroll all the way down almost to the very, very bottom where it says test prep. And you're going to come over here to progress learning. Strongly suggest that you hit that little like button so it automatically pops up in your favorites at the top. And you can also set it to your teacher page. So if I click on this and students go to my page when they log in, they can easily get to the things that they need for my class specifically. So once you get through Clever and you find progress learning, you simply click on it and it will automatically log you in. Now, once you're logged in, the very first thing you're going to need to do is to set up your classes. So you'll see that my first two classes have already been set up, but my third class still needs to be set up. So super, super simple to set up your class. There's really only one thing that's missing. You click into it. And you'll see that it says your class is pending. Please complete the sections marked below. This section is marked, so I'm going to click on the subjects. And you'll see that there's no subject found. So what you have to do is add the subject that you need for that class specifically. So I am currently assigned to high school, so I don't have access to any of the middle school ones except for a couple. So I'm going to scroll down to the high school. And since my class is biology, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the science and I'm going to find the biology. I'm going to choose both the old biology standards and the new ones that we are getting for next year because both of them have some really good questions that I can choose from. Once I have those subjects, I'm going to click OK. And you'll see now that it has this. And if I go back to my class management, or you can click the home button, either one, you'll see that this third class no longer has that pending set up next to it. And your class is good to go. So that's step one. And step two, once your classes have been set up, now you can start building assignments, building assessments, and differentiating with your classrooms. So we're going to start with building a simple assignment. So right here at the home screen at the top, you'll see that there's one called Assignment Builder. So I'm going to click on Assignment Builder. And I'm just going to name my first assignment Practice 23. And I'm going to choose the subject I want. My subjects that I added to the class are going to be the first two that pop up, but you actually have access to everything that you are currently assigned to. So again, I'm high school, so I have access to all the high school content. So I'm going to click on the standard that I want. And then you'll see when you come down here that you have lots of options. So if you were a former user of USA Test Prep, you still have the option to build assignments with multiple things within it. So I can use assessments that I have pre-built so I have like a biology pre-assessment. I also have access to all of the assessments that have been built by either previous biology teachers that shared within USA Test Prep or any of the ones that were created um, during curriculum work in the summer that were in USA Test Prep. Those were also imported into progress learning. So I can choose any of those if I want them. You can have it generate its own test. You can make it a practice assessment. You can choose how long. Um, I'm going to save that for when I do build assessment. So I'm going to just do a practice, assi practice assignment. So I'm going to go to practice questions and I'm going to choose my standard or what they call domains. And then you can choose multiple if you want, but I'm just going to stick to one for now. And once you've chosen your standard underneath that, you'll get all of the indicators for each one. So we're currently working on biomolecules, so I'm going to choose biomolecules and enzymes. Now, in this case, it would assign two separate 10-question sets to my students, which I'm okay with. But you can also combine them into a single activity, so it takes those two and puts them into one single question set and makes it only 10 questions total. So it gives them that if you choose. All right. You can also add video lessons. So if you're familiar with USA Test Prep, these are very similar. They're the same ones that were in that. So you choose, again, your domain and then your standard. 
and the videos that were there still pop up. So I'm going to assign them the carbs one and lipids. You also have options for constructed response. Again, it's exactly what it sounds like. Students would actually type a response. I'll show you one as well. And you can actually click and see exactly what that assignment would look like. So you can read the question, say, okay, yes, I would like to include that one, or eh, I don't know if I like that one. Let me read what this one says. Pick one that you like. When you check it, it automatically adds it to the assignment. And now I have all the parts that I want. So I'm gonna click save and continue. And then here's where you have the chance to assign it to a class. Now, if you don't wanna assign it to a class yet, you can choose this option right here, create an assignment without assigning to a class, or you can assign it to one or multiple classes. The other great thing that this is different from USA Test Prep that they added. There was always a eliminate one option choice in USA Test Prep, but you used to have to create its own assignment. Now you can click plus on your class and choose which students you want it assigned to. So if I don't want to assign it to someone, they're um, at SOAR and they don't need it assigned to them right now, so it doesn't include in my gradebook, I can choose them off. I can also, for any of my students who have IEPs, ILPs, 504s that for whatever reason might call for you to eliminate one answer choice or I just know these students might do better if I get rid of one for them, you can individually select and no other students know that they only have three options versus the four options. So I click save and continue and then you can add notes as you choose. So you can put no note, I can attach a text note, I can also do text to speech, I can make a video and embed that for my kids if I'm gonna be absent, telling them what they need to accomplish. You can do any of those things. That's kind of different from what USA Test Prep had and then save and continue. And then you have your final settings. So again, you have a start date, you have a due date. You can add to the school bank. So if you're working with a team and you created the assignment and you want to share it with your teammates, you can easily click this and anybody who's assigned to your school can also see that in their assignment center, which I'll show you once I finish. And then here you can set your settings. This is also super similar to what USA Test Prep had. So you can change it to unlimited attempts or however many you want. If you choose to have a minimum score requirement, it will automatically swap the first one to unlimited. So you can choose however you want to set that. If you choose a constructed response, you have to give it a point value. Um, again, you can give them a maximum, you can limit their characters, however much, and then you can reorganize how you want the assignments to be. And you can make it so that they have to complete the activities in a specific order, or if you leave that off, then they can do any of the activities at their leisure in whatever order they want. Once you have everything set to the settings that you want, you simply click Save Assignment. It'll automatically bring you back to your assignment bank under the Assessment and Assignment Center. So under your assignment bank, you can see that this is the one I just created right here, the Practice 23. It is shared because I allowed it to be shared with my colleagues. And up here you have kind of like what each one is. So this is a group assignment and I can tell it's a group because it has that little plus. You can click on it and it'll show you that it has all of those things. You can preview them at any time. And then when students complete it, it'll go to your grade book. So I go back to my classes, class management, and I click on my grade book. You'll now see that those students have that practice 23 assignment. And when they due date passes, it should automatically change to A0. So that's the second part of creating an assignment. Okay, so now that we have built our assignments, now we're gonna go back home 
and we're going to work on building an assessment. An assessment is different than assignment because assignment is typically more of practice and you can build those multiple pieces in. Assessment builder is where you can create your own assessments that you can assign to students. So under assessment builder, the first thing you're going to do under settings is you're going to do the same thing. You're going to create an assessment name. So I'm going to put practice test. And then same thing, you're going to add your subject. And then you can choose what you would like to do. Do you want to share that assessment? Do you have a team you want to work with or not? Do you want to allow the students to view those results? So similar, if you use USA Test Prep where you could, they could just see their score, but they couldn't see any of the questions, view the questions only, or view questions and answers. You can choose to display questions in a random order um, and allow for calculator or not. Since our EOC has a calculator, I always embed that, and I just do the scientific calculator and leave it as that. Once you have those set up, then you click save and continue and it automatically brings you to content. And you can do two different things. You can show that I will select the questions, in which case you simply select the domain that you want or what I call standard, then the indicator, and then you can change it to all questions, the question type, you can pick anything that you would like. And then you can go through each one preview the type of question that you want, see if it's a question that you would want to include. So like this is a technology enhanced question, which is great if you have like an EOC or you have a pass test at the end, um, how you can do drag and drops, which is very common in those tests nowadays. So you can include those. I personally like to do progress learning will select the questions because you can now actually change what you want it to select. So questions shall be chosen for all domains according to the percentage in the pie chart. So you can choose it based on what you want. And you can make it however. I'm going to do small. And then I'm going to click save and preview. Now this is where you can change some things. And this is different if you used USA Test Prep before and allowed it to choose your questions for you. So now that I'm here, you can see that it chose questions based on different things. So that is a little bit different because I did want it to be simply, I just chose EOC. So when I go back and I choose this, here's the only issue with this one is that it doesn't allow me to choose a specific set of indicators. So that is a little different. So if you want to choose specifically the questions, then you're going to want to choose this one instead and choose those specifically. If you want something that kind of has a little bit of everything, then you want to do it the other way. So this does give you an option to do it that way, but you can really choose either one, whichever one works for you. So I'm going to go ahead and go this way just so you can see some other options you have. Here, this is where you can change some things. So like there's domain six, standard 17 standards. You can group it by however you want. So it'll like change it based on the standard. So all the cells as a system at the top, energy transfer, heredity, ecosystem evolution. But now I can look at the question, view it, what it looks like as a student. And if I don't like the question, I can replace it. So this is actually how I built my pretest that I did. I took it so it took a little bit from everything. And then I went through and I looked at the questions and I was like, okay, I like that, that question. That one's good. If you don't like the question, you can now click replace. And it'll give you five different options that you can replace it with instead previewing each one and go, oh, I like this one better. And you'll see that some of them are simple multiple choice and some of them are select all that apply. And so you can choose to select that question. And if you don't like any of those, you can refresh the list and it gives you all new sets of questions. And if you're like, ah, maybe I did like the first one better, you can go to this X 
and you have that. So I'm gonna select save, and you can do that for all of them. You can view every question that was chosen and replace anything that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save assessment. And since I didn't click assign, it's automatically gonna take me to a assessment bank, which again has everything that either you had from USA Test Prep pulled over or that the district pulled over as well. So these ones were all ones that were created before. Um, I only created these two. These were ones that were already in here when I logged in. So these are all ones that have been created by the district at some point. So now if I wanted to assign this, you can do it two ways. You can click here, assign, or you can actually click into it and assign from there. But the easiest way is just to assign here. You can always go back and edit it, and you have the same options that you did with the assignment. So you can click on any classes that you want. You can show all the students. You can click any off. Again, you can choose which students you want to eliminate one answer choice from. Save and continue. Add notes or no notes. Make your assignment dates. And then again, you can change your number of assignments if you want a minimum score, and then save assignment. Once that's been saved, again, if I go now to my, my assignments, I can see that my practice test has been assigned to all of my students. My practice assignment has been assigned to all of my students. And if I went to my classes, and I clicked on my gradebook, you would see that now that practice test is also in there and I can specifically click on that and it will bring me to the whole test and I can start looking at results as students take it. Okay, so after you've built your assessment, the last thing that we are going to do is start learning how to differentiate instruction using those resources. So. From here, we're gonna go back to the home screen. And you've got something where you can look at progress reports. So I'm gonna go right here to, you can choose any of your class, but I'm gonna choose my first class. And I'm gonna click on progress report. So when you click on progress report, you're gonna see that it's gonna choose your class and it's gonna automatically select a standard. I'm gonna select the EOC since that's still the one that we're currently using. And then, once you select all the options, you can do it for all your classes, you can do it for one class. So I'm gonna specifically do my first class and then anything that's been taken. And then you click run report. If you used USA Test Prep previously, this was called the green dot challenge. They have a green dot challenge as well, super similar. Basically that was something that has been imported. Now, since these classes were just set up, I don't have a lot of data. In fact, I just used an example data set of a student's giving them a pretend assessment so you could see what things are. But here I can see the class dot rank and I can see that in this case, anything that's gray, we haven't learned about yet. They haven't had any assignments on, they haven't taken any data from, and that's okay. So I know that this student is kind of there on interpreting data. Um, they, didn't hardly answer. They had one question or one question here, but there's not enough data for them to actually give them a dot yet um, since they didn't get any question correct. So it's going to tell me that they have a red. There were two that they answered here, so they gave them a red, three here. They answered two questions correctly here, green. So you can kind of see this is over the classroom. You can also go to student.rank and you'd be able to see where all of your students are in regards to any assessment or assignments that you've given them. We'll start taking into account these things. So right now, again, mine is relatively empty because my students have my classes just reset. So I don't have a lot of data yet, but you can see where they have strong points and where they have not so strong points. Once you have actually given students an assessment or an assignment, you can assign them remediation. And so what you'll do is 
go, go back to your class management center. And if you look at the grade book, so I just had a student complete a practice test just so that I could show some data. So if I click on their results, it'll take me to where they're at. So I can see everything that they have completed, where they're at. I can look at things like this. I can look at what they missed. I can do all of those things. I can also go specifically to the practice test itself. And within the practice test, you can see where things are scored. And now, now that I have data, I can actually click on assign remediation. So this is something similar that USA Test Prep added um, a few years ago where you could actually assign remediations. You can do one week, one week area, two week areas, or three. Um, you can also, it will not assign it to any students who scored less than an 80. So any students who scored over an 80% for all the assignments will not get remediation. So you're not assigning random things to students who don't need it, which I think is great. So I'm gonna pick two week areas. So let's say I gave our test on Wednesday and we have our common assessment coming up. So we're doing some remediation to make sure that we are good. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna choose what dates I wanna assign in it. When do I want the due date to be by? And then you select all the students who you need. You can select any or you can select all. Again, it will automatically tell students who scored 80. It will not give you an option to assign it. And then you simply click assign. It'll pop up in that student's center. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on a student for you so you guys can see what it would look like on their end. So this is kind of what they would see when they log in. So they would see their score, the tokens that they earned, if they earned any, and some additional practice that they can do for each thing that they didn't. So here, this is what it assigned them, some videos and questions for conducting investigations. They can see a breakdown of everything, and they also have a lot of other things that they can do as well. So I'm gonna show you one last thing that students themselves can do. Um, after I show you, I'm gonna go back to the class center so that you can see um, if I go to my grade book, it's got that practice test. They would also see the um, remediation. So I'm gonna go back to my class and I'm gonna click on the class. And this is where you can log in and see what the students look like. So I'm gonna log in as a student. And you'll see that this is what theirs looks like. So here, she already took that practice test, but now that she's completed the practice test and I assigned her remediation, these are the two remediations that she has to take in order to get whatever, maybe you're giving them points back on that test or however you choose to do that. That would be a great way that you could bump students up because they completed their remediation. So just so you can kind of see what theirs looks like when you take, give them an assessment of any kind. On old USA Test Prep with the assessments, it used to be one long page that they would go in and click through. Now, whether you're doing an assignment or you're doing an assessment, the questions look like this. So it's one question at a time. You can have it read to them if you need it to. So the oral accommodation is built right in for you. Another way that you can differentiate for students. They have all these different options of things you can do, calculator built in, response masking. Um, so getting rid of answers that they're like, I know that one's wrong and I know that one's wrong. So all of these are built in features. They can have sticky notes. They can literally draw on top of their questions if they so choose. Um, they can erase all that kind of stuff. Uh, so they have lots of features built in now that were not necessarily there before. And they only get one question at a time. The only thing that they cannot do is go back. So once they've answered the question, 
they cannot go back to the question, but it will make them answer it. So they're working on that feature. It has been given to them. So when they're doing those remediations, if they miss it right then and there, it's going to tell you that they missed it. And then it's going to make them try and answer it again. So it's like, okay, no, that one's not correct. Here's an explanation. So it, the remediation actually walks them through what they did wrong. The other thing that they can see, they can see all of their graded work, what they've gotten, etc. They also get a study plan. So if they have more than one class, they can look at the multiple class, but they can go here and they can actually see their own progress report, which shows them their own dots and they can work on anything at any time. So this is another way that your students can you can remediate for your students themselves based on what they've already completed. So, so we are gonna go back to that study plan. They can look at their dot rank. They can actually also see it here. So when they click on this right here, they can see where they're at on any of them if they've completed anything. So like here, their dot rank, she's a 50 in photosynthesis. So there's a videos that she can watch. There's questions that she can complete and it'll show the practice progress and how that can increase their percent and they can do these multiple times until they bring their dot rank up and as they do practice assignments for you and other things it'll increase their dot rank so this shows it right here they can click on okay i want to do the questions pull that up it'll say begin and then they can start working on those so there's lots of ways that you can differentiate for students they can have lots of different things and at any time you can go back through, I can go to assignments, she can see. So their view is very, very easy. I actually like this view better than I did on USA Test Prep. And you can message students if they're working while you're on, they can message you. Um, you can message them. It, you do have to both be on, but there's a lot of things you can do. So I'm gonna to return to my account. All the things you need, you have your school center, the class center, the assessment assignment center, it's where everything is, home, everything's at the top and linked right here with your classes. So there's lots of things you can do. You also have a calendar, um, lots of reports. You can get those reports here, the progress report, the grade book. This one is for elementary, so you shouldn't need to worry too much about them. You can see how much time kids are spending. Um, you can get assessment results reports, basically everything you need. And then there is that USA test prep fault if you need to go back to anything. Um, they are pretty good about responding as well. So if you ever have questions, feel free to email them or go to that help center and request um, some things, or you can um, also ask your tech team and we can put in requests as well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.